Girls, come here. Girls. Hi, girls. How's it going? They just come. They love, they're part of the family. They hang out with us. This is Twinkle. Twinkle will walk the plank. This is Clucky. She, my daughter named her because she's very loud. This is Johnny. And then we have Boots and Martha down there. And Clifford the chicken. I don't know where Clifford is right now, but she's kind of famous. We have six girls and they give us delicious eggs and Maddie sells them to our neighbors as a way to learn business. <laughs> business early on it's fun having animals around is a great way for us to have better buddies super important so we get exposure I love when we go out and one of our things we do is hang out with the girls after school and Maddie gets to play in the dirt and we you know we clean their coop and that's all good exposure because they have buddies too Sarah Morgan, thanks so much for coming on. It's great to be with you. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, so the, you're the author of Buddies in Your Belly, which is a great child's book. It's also good for parents, too. And I was telling you offline, you know, uh, having young kids, when you're reading to them, yeah. sometimes these books, they don't really make a lot of sense, right? There's not a lot of, like, education for the parents. So mm -hmm. that, we know how important it is to read to a kid, but it's so great when we can, like, be educated, too. So yeah. I yeah. commend you for writing this book. So what's kind of the premise and how can, yeah, yeah how did the book come about? So, you know, as a mom myself and having a master's degree in nutrition, we actually went to the same school, yes, which is super cool. Yes, Bridgeport. Woohoo! Yeah, I love yeah. that. Uh, you know, I remember one day, I, my daughter was like two and a half and mm -hmm. I was looking at her, I'm like, it would be so cool if she could really understand these important concepts about her health and then not only understand it, but really implement it, you know, to yeah. be empowered to implement it and be part of that from early on. So that really led me on this creative journey. And, you know, I think a lot of times as parents and even moms, it's like this, we want the best for our kids. You know, we want to feed them well. We want to make good choices but sometimes it can feel like nagging yeah. <laughs> or we get exhausted trying to do this because our kids really aren't involved in the process. And something I find too is sometimes it's one person in a household that's you know really passionate about health and they're listening to podcasts and they're getting educated, but then no one else in the family unit cares or they don't get it. And so you can feel kind of isolated and it's lonely. So I was like, how could we do this in a way that, you know, everybody gets to participate in the family, right? Make health fun for everyone is really what I say. So, you know, I started thinking about what we know about the microbiome. And what I like to say is I stand on the shoulders of those who came before me and you're one of those people oh, that came you. before me. And you've actually taught me a lot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like in our master's program, we learned about some of these things and modern science is still uncovering some of the details, right? Of yeah. the human body and how marvelous it is. And you know we've learned that we have trillions of microscopic organisms that live in our digestive tract, two to four pounds-ish of who we are, mm -hmm. are the friendly health-promoting bacteria that collectively we call the microbiome. And you know, when I was surveying people, like the average person in America, they're like, what's a microbiome? Mm -hmm. You know, and like gut health, what does that mean? So we're doing a good job of getting the message out, but I'm like, I really want to make it something that the, you know, average person in America who doesn't have a scientific background can really connect to it. Yeah, that's great. And, you know, it's like Albert Einstein, he, he's one of my most inspirational historical figures. And he said, if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. And I was like, whoa, you know, because yeah. we talk technical. So I remember I was, you know, sitting in my living room one night and I'm thinking about this and I'm looking at my daughter and I'm like, okay, how do I connect science to everyday life in the way that a four-year-old or a 40-year-old can understand? I'm like, wow, these bacteria that really regulate most of our human health, they really are our buddies. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, and most of them live in our belly. And it was this kind of like, oh my gosh, the concept came together. Yeah. And it was, it was just cool. It's like one of those, you know, everything connected. And I was like, okay, now I have this idea, then how do we actually bring it to life with illustration? Mm -hmm. You know, to actually, you know, uh, show this concept in a way that kiddos can really get. So I found my illustrator creative director and I told him his name's Henry Daniel Bell. I call him Danny. I was like, hey, Danny, 
do you think that you can make bacteria cute? Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, I've never done that. Because, you know, you do a quick Google search and a lot of it bacteria, scary, yeah, yeah, they're like yeah. terrifying. You know, I'm like, kids aren't going to relate to that. That's yeah. not exciting. They don't seem like buddies, you know. So uh, we kind of went on this journey together and we started sketching things. And I'm like, man, bacteria have these complex names, right? Mm -hmm. That can be kind of intimidating, like lactobacillus, bifidobacterium, and kids, you know, as they're Fecal pronouncing. Yeah, 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 exactly. So we were kind of like, okay, how do we make them characters that mm -hmm. kids can really relate to and are fun? So I'm like, what if we shorten the name? So it's like, okay, we have lacti, AKA lactobacillus, sure. biffy, AKA bifidobacterium, Term. And that's really how the buddies in my belly came together as um, this really fun story. It's so cool. I mean, like I was saying, I mean, my daughter was super excited because it's a cool book. But for me as a parent, it was great that she's starting to learn about these things that maybe, I, I don't know about the school curriculum, but like, even though the microbiome project started in 2012 and everything like that, like, I don't think you know, elementary school teachers are going to be talking about intestinal microbiome and foods that influence that. And so it's making the connection between, you know, because as parents, we want our kids to eat vegetables and high quality food and not eat sugar. And so it's like, how can you reinforce that? And so the yeah. book is really cool by, you know, you talk about if you eat sugar, I mean, Halloween was just very recent. And so you're going to feed these bad bugs. And so it, it's kind of like helping them connect the dots and yes. make better choices, which is cool. Yeah. And it allows them, you know, what's so neat that I've seen with my own daughter and other kids, you know, and parents email me, they're like, thank you, Sarah. Mm. This is so cool. Is they really get it. They're like, oh man, if I eat too much like candy, processed foods, that's going to feed the bad germs and they're going to beat up my buddies. And then maybe I'm not gonna be so healthy. And that could be things like, it's not just a tummy ache, right? It's connecting things like, maybe you're more likely to get colds, maybe your mood is impacted, maybe you don't sleep as well. All these things that children now in the United States are impacted, right? Our kids right. are sick. Oh, and yeah. I just believe we have the ability to make that better, right? Mm -hmm. We can, there's solutions out there and they're simple, yeah. uh, but we need to let kids be part of that process. and. We need to empower parents too, because parents want that, but I think there's a disconnect too for them between the scientific language and the everyday person of like, how do we build that bridge connected so that families and communities can run after health together? That's awesome. Well, and like you said, I think it's usually one person in the family that's fired up about this. Usually mom, mm -hmm. the, the male or the, the young kids are like, oh yeah, mom's just a little bit crazy about this sort of mm -hmm. stuff. And so, yeah to get everyone on the same page and maybe it can and maybe sometimes it's dad's on board and mom's not on board but a book to get to you know gather people around so that they realize why they're eating these healthy foods yeah which is really key and so that's what's nice about the, about the book and, and like i said on you know i'll say it again you know there's a lot of children's books out there and we read to our kids and a lot of them i'm like i don't i'm not excited to read about them because I don't want to spend time talking about some story that makes, you know, it's not going to affect my life. Whereas yeah. learning about these different, because I'm like, oh, what is she talking about? And you're yeah. talking about all these different bacteria, which I didn't know about or haven't you know, read about recently. So yeah. that's really neat. Um, and you have different ways to like incorporate more foods, like a little chart that you have in your refrigerator. We'll cut to some B-roll of that yeah. to help really cement this in for kids. Yes. So, you know, a big passion of mine is I really want this to be kind of the Sesame Street of health, you know, and we'll do other books outside of Buddies in My Belly to teach about these important health concepts. And implementation is so important, right? It's like, that's what makes all the difference. So we're creating a lot of resources to help kids and families really be able to day to day, right? When they wake up, when they go through their day, they're able to, you know, live this way, implement, have these conversations. So we've got a food chart nice. that's a tear out in the back of the book. And it's, you know, a buddies in my belly food chart. And it's how we feed the buddies, you know, the different days of the week with the different colors. And we talk about diversity, right? We know that in research, we're keeping the science serious for serious health in a way that's seriously fun for everyone. Kids get to check it off. You know, they get to, it's like, wait a minute, I ate a green food, you know, I ate a blue food, I ate a red food. And they get to start thinking like, oh yeah, my buddies actually like that too. Like 
when I eat the food and then they eat the food and I'm feeding them as well. So we have that, we have a Buddies in My Belly food plate and mm. we're actually in the process of making those into actual plates so mm. parents can use those at mealtime. Like, hey, do you feed your buddies well? Let's, you know, half the plate's vegetables. We want lots of plants. Um, and then we have little charts and fun things that people can do like our um, helps the buddies, hurts the buddies. And that mm. goes beyond diet, right? It's lifestyle stuff as well, like your water quality or what kids are drinking because they drink a lot of sugar through mm -hmm. their you know. the calories. Yes. And that impacts the buddies, right? Mm -hmm. um, or just water quality, right? It's like a simple, you know, carbon filter on your fridge at yeah. least takes out some of the chlorine. You know, we use chlorine in pools to mm -hmm. kill the bad germs, but we that hurts the buddies too, right? <laughs> yeah. And we're drinking that. And then, you know, movement, things like we want to get outside, we want to move because people who move regularly and you do such a fabulous job with this message, um, they have better microbiomes, mm. right? Their buddies are healthier. Sleep yeah. is huge. And I love all the work you're doing with that. But people who sleep better have better buddies. Mm. And the buddies get tired, you know, the buddies get thirsty. Yeah. So it's really incorporating this in a way that it's a it's a conversation that families can have, whether it's, you know, at bedtime when they're reading the book or it's at mealtime or they're grocery shopping. My daughter was, you know, without me saying anything, we're going through the aisles and she's like, mommy, that's really good for the buddies. That's good for the buddies. Oh, that's bad for the buddies. So that cool. feeds the bad germs. And it's, it's like she's getting it. And what I get excited about is when kids get this, they take that throughout their lives and there's really a ripple effect, mm -hmm. right? And we see, um, you know, they go away as adults and they're incorporating this into their life. And we start to have an impact positively on generations, right? Where we have all these different diseases and problems we're dealing with that really stem from issues with the microbiome. And we can change that. And I really believe there's this is a big part of the solution, you know, totally. to make kids healthier. I'm excited. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, sometimes we think that it's going to be some sort of policy level thing that's going to all of a sudden randomly change. Like if we tax sugar foods or whatever. But really, I think people make choices when they're intrinsically motivated to mm -hmm. do so, especially with kids. And so once they kind of realize and make the connection, connect the dots, that's key. So this is a good you know, this is like what we call like kind of bottom up, you know, sort of like a top yes, down absolutely. government's in charge. It's like, well, let's empower the families and everything, which is really yeah. cool. And it's fun. We've been going into schools, just like we're kind of getting into that mode and all the teachers are like, this is so amazing. It's yeah. like when kids learn, they have a heart and a brain. It's like how cool for them to learn they have buddies. Yeah. And we have a really cool way we're going to teach about mitochondrial health and Sweet. all these other things coming up. So well. awesome. That's really, really cool. Um, and then I, what I've noticed like with my daughter, when I hear her with her friends talking about like how bad sugar is and what sugar does, and they like, they like to teach their friends and it makes them feel kind of empowered, right? Yes. And then once they start to teach, then it's like they, they make more consistent and congruent choices, right? So it's, mm -hmm. it's this really cool way of grassroots, like helping people. So yes. really appreciate you guys tuning into this video. Um, the links will be below this video to Amazon. Anywhere books are sold, your book is available. Yes, yeah, and the best yeah. way to get it right now is Amazon. We're kind of working on our other distributions. And we'll actually have Buddies in My Belly episodes we'll have oh. on YouTube and social media where kids can kind of interact again and watch at another level of how the buddies you know, interact with their mm -hmm. environment and everything that's important for their health. Your environment, yeah, that's a key point because you have backyard chickens and rabbits. Yes. So a lot of families are like scared of chickens. Like um, I have a family that are like, when they come over with the chickens, they're like, wash your hands, kids, and everything. But these the are salmonella, good. yeah. Yeah, you're gonna fear. get yeah. everything. But I don't know. Have you? Has your daughter ever gotten sick from the chickens? No, not at all. And I don't actually watch that very closely because mm -hmm. the other thing is animals have buddies too in their belly, and we talk about that a lot. So if we care for our animals well, right? They eat organic feed. Mm -hmm. They're you know digging in the dirt. We've got buddies in our soil, which we need to learn to take care of as yeah. a world. That's another one we're gonna do. Buddies on the farm. Nice. <laughs> talk about all that, but you know, there's a connection to all of those things. And if we teach people to not be afraid, but be empowered, yeah. it changes everything. Totally. And, and the, the key point there is their environment. And I, so I think, you know, a lot of people are scared because, you know, we hear about salmonella from chickens that never see sunlight. They're living on concrete in com totally compacted and wave. Like you have six chickens in a massive space, like a yeah. commercial farm would have maybe like 20 chickens in that small little space. Mm -hmm. And so then you get disease and everything and there's no airflow. So, 
you know, it's a key point. And so I think, um, I think, unfortunately, because food, now we can get food on Amazon, we can get food delivered. So there's not a lot of people, there's no real impetus to like spend the extra time because mm-hmm. you get maybe six eggs a day during the summer or whatever. Yep. And so people are like, well, why would I want to spend all that much time just for six eggs? Well, it's like, it's all the other things, like the responsibility that your daughter gets. And, yes. And, and having your fingers in the dirt yeah. <laughs> and exposed to all those, you know, buddies that live in the soil are such a benefit to totally. them as well. Yeah. So get into backyard chickens, guys. If you have yes. kids, it is so key and it's so yeah, fun. They're probably the is. fam. Yeah. So my lifelong dream, I hope what I'll see happen some days, I really want to have a buddy's farm mm. and have it be a place where we literally model all of this and then children and adults get to come and experience that at a whole yeah. nother level. Be with pigs and chickens and goats and yes. the whole thing. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Sarah, thanks again for coming yeah. on. And so if people are listening right now, I'll put <laughs> links. Lex, lay down. You're fine. Are you guys like me one take, Ovi? No, no, we're good. Um, so if folks want to connect with you, is Instagram the best or what platform? Like if they're listening right now, where should they go? Yeah, we're building that up, to be oh. honest. So I would say we're on Instagram and Facebook. Mm-hmm. Um, so those are probably some of the best like uh, handles to just buddies in my belly um, okay. to find us at. Yeah. Search that, guys. Yeah. And if you know someone with kids that needs to hear this message, please share this video with them. We'll be following the comments and I'll bring you in it. And so awesome. folks can ask you some questions and other things where you can get different guides and resources and everything. So Sarah, keep up the great work. I'm really Thanks. proud of you. I yeah. know that you worked with this for a while. I remember yes. back in like 2015, you had, mm-hmm. maybe it was 2016 and you had this idea and here you are. You've been on like yes. a bunch of like big media and- Getting there, yeah, it's, it's fun. Awesome. It's really fun. It's Hopefully cool. we'll get it out to the world and in schools is my big hope. That's key. Yeah. Right keep it up. Yeah, thanks. Cheers. <laughs>